me diverse just for one moment to show you how quickly this world can change. Okay, very, very sure. quickly. I indicated that not all world catastrophic events result in a pole shift. Well, I don't believe you're aware. Maybe you are, uh, but I don't believe most people are aware that just a few thousand years ago, at 705 B.C., a major worldwide catastrophic event occurred. It actually shifted the entire planet, but it was not a pole shift. In fact, um, during that time, King Hezekiah reigned, and the sun moved backward in the sky. It did not set. It simply, the, the planet stopped revolving in its current direction, and it moved backward hmm. about 10 hours worth, of almost half of a revolution. And then whatever gravitational wave or passing space body affected it, it released it. And then it continued to move forward in the same direction. At that very same time, 705 B.C., according to our current calendar, the ancient Chinese, who were great astronomers, they recorded that the sun set twice in the same day. It set, it rose back up from the west, and it set again. Now That sounds like we were doing the movie. Right. Now, during that time, before that time, we have discovered, I mean, plant, it is very well documented over hundreds of years. There are historically 15 ancient calendars before, that were discovered before that time, before seven, that existed before 705 B.C. Fifteen. Fifteen ancient calendars. Every one of those calendars has 360-day years. Every calendar is based on a 360-day year. After that event... Every calendar for the next five years, all around the planet, all the civilizations change their calendars. The Assyrians, the Chaldeans, the Egyptians, the Hebrews, the Persians, the Greeks, the Chinese, the Mayans, the Hindus. Um, there's every civilization that existed during that time over the next five years readjusted their calendars to 365-day years. Something happened. How did they know this? They knew it because the stars didn't line up. In fact, huh. the, they took various approaches. It was very interesting. Um, Numus uh, Pompilius, the second king of Rome, recognized the original calendar, but he added five days per year to it to adjust. Uh, king Hezekiah, uh, Numus contemporary at that same time, reorganized the Jewish calendar in a very bizarre way. He added a month each Jewish leap year on a cycle of seven, every seven and 19 years to make up the adjustment. Other civilizations made different adjustments as they saw the, ca the, the rotational speed of the Earth uh, change as it moved around the sun. So over, over the period of the next five years, all the civilizations caught up to 365-day years. And today, we have 365-day years, but we didn't have that in the immediate past. Um, before 705 B.C., they were 360 days. That is amazing. So it just shows you that not all global catastrophic events, it also shows you how frail we are. That a pass, We don't know what caused that, but we assume it was a passing space body because we are no longer near the galactic plane like we're approaching now. So if, if something that small, a passing space body, could cause that, obviously with enough gravitational pull to affect the planet, as our entire solar system passes through this gravitational plane, we expect massive upheaval, as we're starting to see with the earthquakes. And then as we pass through it, we expect to be bombarded by a series of small asteroids followed by larger asteroids as we continue to pass through it. The asteroids, are, of course, are the dust and the settling matter along the dark rift. And this is where I come back to your question about wormwood. Mm -hmm. The... the the prophecies that you're talking about, the one that specifically mentions Wormwood, it mentions that after it talks about a series of events, starting with a pole shift of no less. Um, the exact wording would be similar to the sky recedes as a scroll when it's rolled up, and every mountain and island is moved off of its foundation. Well, if you look at the planet and use terminology that you don't, you don't have scientific terminology back then, but if you use whatever terminology you have and you say that every mountain on the planet and every island on the planet is moved off of its foundation, 
that certainly sounds like a pole shift to me. Absolutely. The, what we expect in our model is exactly what the prophecies then indicate. Um, now that your atmosphere is stripped, I mean, it just said it rolled away like a scroll, you are um, at risk to incredible solar radiation or CME blasts. Uh, and what is the next prophecy in this series of things? You have um, literally, if I can, uh, let, me, let me find, uh, what I would like to do is I would find, like to find a, a phrase that describes that particular event. Here okay. it is. Let me read to you a phrase from one of, the do, uh, one of the prophecies that you're referring to and explain it. Uh, it. And hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees were burnt up. They're mine. Okay, now, remember, they don't have scientific terms. If you rip apart the atmosphere of Earth from with a pole shift... You are now exposing the upper atmosphere. If, if a CME blast from the sun, coronal mass ejection, now makes it to the earth because its magnetosphere has been altered. In other words, our, quote, what is protecting the earth is now down. We are easily susceptible to the solar winds. In other words, the CME from the sun. That is the fire. Also, as it approaches the upper atmosphere, the 270 degrees minus Celsius temperature of the outside free, frigid space now touches the upper atmosphere, which is basically water vapor. It would suddenly turn to ice crystals instantly. There's your ice. The hail, which is ice, and fire, the CME, are mixed together and mingled with blood. You're looking at a sequence. It is now moving toward the earth. What is instantly vaporized? These 43,000 airplanes that are flying at any given moment and all the people aboard, plus all the flying birds and animals in the air. Gone. So in other words, there's your mingled with blood, and then it continues. What does it do? It continues to make it to the deck, and they are thrown to the earth, and a third of the trees are burnt up. In other words, this is a great sequence of events to describe a simple CME blast that literally fries a third of the planet. But the fact they were able to predict this exactly. is scary. Now, the next sequence of events is what we would also expect. Uh, you have small asteroids hitting the land, hitting the sea, followed by a very large asteroid, what is referred to as wormwood. Now, this is the really interesting part about wormwood. You wanted me to give you my take on it. It seems to be a significant. Now, where, where the, how do they actually, what divine information presents what divine information they acquire in order to give you an exact sequence in such extreme detail that science can't even begin to touch. I mean, I'll, I'll have to leave that to you for right now. But they, give, they discuss Wormwood not because it's significant so much, but because of what it does next. A very large, what is like a star or an asteroid, falls to the Earth, and the very next thing that happens is... A third of the day and a third of the night don't shine. A third of the moon, a third of the stars, a third, etc. But this is not an obscuration. Right. This it's an, not like dust in the air. No, 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 no. Because dust in the air is described next, and it uses different words. This is actually a speeding up of the planet. The asteroid Wormwood actually hits the planet at an angle, so our Earth speed no longer is 365 days. Just, and we now know that it is very simple to alter the spin of the Earth because it happened 705 B.C. So basically we have a whole sequence of events. How they could know anything about this is, is beyond human kin. I'm, I'm just telling you that just right up front. Um, so prophecy is absolutely amazing, but what is more amazing to us is we created a scientific model, a very precise scientific model. And we see that this, these prophecies model very precisely what we feel this model would the present. The sun is moving toward a big change in its magnetic field. In fact, the poles are about to switch. And that could have a major effect on perhaps our entire solar system. According to NASA, a change that could quite possibly, uh, if all goes, uh, well, we don't know for sure, but if there are amazing solar storms, Electronic communications could be uh, threatened. 
Uh, to give us some sense of what is happening here in the solar maximum is Dr. Lika Guhatha Kurta, astrophysicist, lead scientist for NASA's Living with the Star initiative. Doctor, it's great to have you with us. Uh, this is exciting stuff. Uh, I, I don't think most people know that uh, the activity on our, our sun uh, is the least it's been for a hundred years, that this maximum looks an awful lot like a minimum, doesn't it? Actually, it does. Um, uh, it, it's uh, really interesting, you know. Uh, many people don't even think of sun as a star simply because we see it in our day sky. We are uh, used to associating stars with night sky. So yes, um, uh, what's going on in the sun uh, as a star and uh, how that affects us is uh, really something that many people don't know. And, and what, so is it, what is at risk here in your judgment, potentially? as we watch the poles of the sun actually reverse uh, themselves as they do every 11 years in the, in the solar cycle. Uh, give us a sense of that. So as you mentioned, right, I mean, this is kind of almost clockwork. The sun goes through an activity phase called the solar cycle when the magnetic field on the sun actually goes through peaking and then it goes down. It goes through ups and downs. And this happens about every 11 years, and so the actual uh, magnetic field in the poles goes through a reversal every 11 years. So the, the, what we are witnessing is not really unprecedented because this has happened over and over again. And in the last 50 years of space age, what we have been able to do is study this phenomenon with uh, better and better resolution telescopes. We are getting a better uh, insight into, uh, in, uh, into what's actually happening on the sun and can we predict some of this phenomenon with sufficient accuracy that people can then begin to kind of take some preventive measures because this activity on the sun, the solar cycle, can cause um, all kinds of effects like space weather space weather uh, affecting our satellite uh, communications, uh, affecting our power grid, if indeed coronal uh, ejections, the solar flares are strong enough, powerful enough, uh, and the influence on our magnetosphere itself, our gravity, our, uh, our polar uh, system itself. Uh, what are your expectations for the next few months? What can we expect as the sun goes, uh, begins its transition uh, from the uh, peak uh, activity uh, solar maximum. So what, what's happening right now, the fact that we are able to actually witness that the uh, field, the polar field of the sun is actually uh, reversing, that tells us that we are very close to solar maximum. Solar maximum is when we have sunspots that kind of pepper the surface of the sun. These are dark regions and these are regions of very strong magnetic field. In fact, these dark regions, you know, if you took one of them out from the surface would be very bright but they are dark because of the strong magnetic field which inhibits essentially energy and flow the, into this region and the and, uh, with about 45 seconds left doctor do you expect this to have an impact here on earth uh, so solar maximum means we'll have greater number of solar storms. Solar storms can always have impact on our uh, technologically dependent society. These observations are used by NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center to provide alerts and forecasting to the rest of the nation.